episode, I'm going to talk about JavaScript frameworks. And I know that this is a little bit of a strange topic because a lot of people are using JavaScript frameworks on a daily basis. So you have some people using React, Angular, Vue.js, and these are all great frameworks. I do like them, and I think that they do have a place in the market. I think that we have a lot of opportunity to make rich client-side applications with these frameworks. However, when we are talking about the context of most applications, and we talk about the context of a Ruby on Rails application, I think that this need for the JavaScript framework almost comes down a few notches. Where if you are building an application, which does have a lot of client-side functionality, interactivity, then the make use case for a JavaScript framework gets to be a lot higher. So if you're creating something like Photoshop on the web, or if you're creating a Gmail application where interactivity is going to be very constant, it's going to be very high, doing full page refreshes is going to be extremely expensive, and you need to send a lot of little bits and pieces of information very often to update the DOM, then reaching for something like React or Angular or Vue could make a lot of sense. And did you know that you can go to railstore.com to get your own Ruby on Rails t-shirt or your Drift and Ruby t-shirt. So be sure to check that out and use the promo code RUBY for free shipping within the United States. And so for the most part, when we're talking about these JavaScript frameworks, we're talking about accomplishing a very specific task. And for the most part, a lot of these tasks that we are trying to complicate are small components. So within our view, we might have a dashboard which has a bunch of different kind of tickers, or we could have some other kind of interactivity where we want to have this information updated and presented quite often. It's going to change, it's going to have a lot of different interactions. And I think that's where a JavaScript framework can really shine. So when we talk about adding in a JavaScript framework like React, we first need to look at what is our requirements? What experience are we looking for? Are we just reaching for this JavaScript framework because it's something that we are familiar with? Is our team fully on board with this option? And I think that if you have a team that is well versed in something like React, Vue, Angular, then using one of those frameworks could be a viable option because there's not going to be a lot of ramp up time on learning and you're going to be able to be productive. However, at the same time, I think that there are a lot of situations where we are reaching for something that's familiar without the business case or business need for it. So if we are building a application, even something like Facebook, there are going to be a lot of different moving parts and a lot of these moving parts do have a lot of interactivity and they are going to need to be refreshed often. So if we are building a brand new Rails 6 application, what kind of requirements do we have that's going to require this interactivity? And then how are we going to implement within our system? So you have really two main routes that you can go. You could have a Rails API only application, which that's then going to serve the JSON content over to a front end. Whether that front end is built into the same repository as your Rails application, or if it lives entirely separate, and the second option is if you keep your Rails application intact. So it's going to have all of the normal controllers, models, the views that it normally would. However, you just bring in Vue or React as just sprinkles into your Rails application. So you still have all of the benefits and the functionality of your Ruby on Rails application. You have all of the benefits of the action view. However, on these small components, which do need to be highly interactive, you are then taking those and you're making those interactive with React or Vue.js. But the main issue I see with going with the first route is that you're then going to have to leverage something like the React routers or the Vue.js equivalent, and then you're losing a lot of what makes Rails powerful with the front end. So you lose the ability to create partials and load those in, reuse different pages, and that can be done in React, but it is going to be a little bit more complicated than if you were just keeping it within the Rails application. 
And the problem with bringing in React for just sprinkles of the interactive components within your application while you're still maintaining the full action view, the full Rails framework, is that now you're bringing in a whole different framework that is rather heavy. So React itself is pretty small, but there's a lot that goes into it and it's highly customizable to the point where you can start going down a bad path where you're then slowly moving away from doing some JavaScript sprinkles and now you're baking it in much more into your application. And another issue that I have with the JavaScript frameworks is that sometimes they will get deprecated. So a new one will come out and then the audience that was really on board with something like Backbone JS has slowly moved away from it and then they have gone the route of React or Angular or Vue.js. And there's nothing wrong with staying up with current trends of technology. It can be a good thing, but the problem is that now we have a lot of legacy applications in a framework that a lot of people just don't use anymore. There's not a lot of support. The version gets to be rather old and we can get into situations where it's no longer maintained. So now we have a lot of business critical stuff happening on our components that are no longer supported. And that could be a huge technical debt. In fact, I see any kind of JavaScript framework that you're bringing in as a certain level of technical debt that you are going to have to assume. And I honestly think that bringing in something like React, even if your initial intentions are to use it as JavaScript sprinkles within just a certain part of your application for better interactivity, it's a very easy slippery slope to then just start adding it in more and more and more just for the sake of consistency or some other reason. And then you can start getting away from your Rails application even more with bringing in React Router because you have just this one small area of your application that's going to be highly interactive. So you start bringing in the React Routers for this one area because it's going to be very contained and it's not going to have a lot of moving parts but you want to bring it in just so everything is rather isolated. Well, now you've just brought in a whole different level of complexity into what could already be a complex application, and that's going to have a lot of trade-offs and a lot of headaches down the road when someone else has to support it. Okay, so up to this point, I've been bashing JavaScript frameworks like React, Angular, and Vue, and you may be triggered, offended, or something else. I mean, honestly, that's not my intention. It's just to share my experiences with them. But in your experience, you may have found that bringing React into your Rails application is what was able to get you guys from one place over to the next place. And in that case, that's a really good thing. I think having progression and moving forward, not backwards, is always a good thing. I think that if we spend too much of our time working in the past, then we're never going to build for the future. So we can take a lot of the experiences that we've had in the past and bring that to the future. And so I don't think that all JavaScript frameworks are bad. In fact, I think that some of them are extremely good. One of my favorite that I use on all of my applications right now is Stimulus.js. It's made by Basecamp, the same guys who made Ruby on Rails, and it's a micro framework. So there's not a lot of moving parts with it. There's not a whole lot of functionality, but the functionality that you do have is so powerful that you are able to do some highly interactive things on your JavaScript front end. And so just some of the different things that I've been able to do with Stimulus.js, which could be normally a tedious task to do, is saving individual attributes. So as you're filling out a preferences form or maybe a notification section where there's a whole bunch of different options, instead of making the user to hit the save button at the bottom of the form, each time they flag a different option, it'll automatically save. That's a great example of interactivity where we don't have to require additional steps from the user, but we are taking it upon ourselves to make this interaction persistent for them. Another example is doing nested forms. So if you ever had some kind of model where you have your users and then you want to capture their addresses, some users may have multiple addresses associated to them and think of it like a emergency contact list. So you might have one user and then you will have several different emergency contacts. You need their phone numbers, their addresses, and with 
nested forms, you can just hit a add new record, add new record, and it'll pop up a new record each time allowing you to then fill out that information. That's another example of great interactivity that you can do with Stimulus.js. Another example is with client-side validations. Sometimes you have a form and with that form you want to validate that a user is entering in proper information before they even submit it. That way you can give some immediate feedback before making a round trip to the server and back to say, hey, you didn't enter in this correct number, you didn't enter in this correct email address or so forth. And that's some good interaction that you can do with Stimulus as well as another project that I've worked on with Full Calendar, where you're able to build a interactive calendar with event triggers and everything with Stimulus.js. And the best part about all of these different examples is that it's highly interactive for the client side, but then from the development perspective, it's very unobtrusive. There's not a lot of moving parts with it. It can be very clear and easy to write out, and you don't have to worry about your code getting all over the place, you just insert it in when you need it. Another example with stimulus that I've used is building a interactive map with Google Maps. You can post data markers on there, all within Stimulus.js. It never has to leave that controller. It can exist all within that controller, and then you just load it within your view, passing in whatever parameters that that map may need. And then we can get into some much more highly interactive options, and this is all with Rails 6, Turbolinks Action Cable, and Stimulus JS. Where I've had a background job that would run through and do a lot of different calculations. And so as these calculations were happening, I needed some way to let the front end know that these things are happening. And once these tasks are getting completed, I wanted to let the user know where we are at in the whole progress. So when the user submits a form to do some heavy calculations, it's going to then load up a progress bar. And as the background workers are then processing that job, it's then going to start sending some feedback through Action Cable. And then Action Cable is then going to trigger Stimulus to then start updating the UI. And the library for stimulus components are growing more and more every day. There are some great projects out there which add even more flexibility and interactions within your Rails application. And a notable one and a popular one is Stimulus Reflex. You're able to create interactive real-time applications with ease using Stimulus Reflex. There's not a lot of moving parts, so it's not going to there's not a lot of moving parts, so you're not going to muddy up your application, and it's going to stay pretty self-contained within these different reflexes. And so ultimately, you're going to have to figure out what's going to work best for your team. And personally, I think adding in a front-end framework like React, Angular, or Vue is a mistake for most applications. You're adding more complexity than needed and you're not getting a lot of benefit from it. At least from a Ruby on Rails perspective, using Stimulus.js, Turbolinks, Action Cable, and the growing list of components. And when you start adding in those libraries, then you can eventually run into issues where now you are stuck with these frameworks that you had to maintain or extract, and then that's going to have its own set of problems. Because one of the nicest things about Stimulus that I really like is that it is so small and so contained within your Rails application. And for whatever reason, your business is deciding to move to React or Vue.js, then extracting out your Stimulus code and then plugging in a React component would not be difficult. It's going to be much easier than going the other way around of extracting out React and then going with Stimulus. So I think if you are creating a new Ruby on Rails application, I would first stick with the action view. I would not split it out to a React router and have a completely separate front end. And then when you start needing some more interaction within your application, I would then add in stimulus. When you start having some more complicated functionality requirements that maybe is going to be a lot to do within Stimulus, then I would look into something like Stimulus Reflex that you would be able to add in fairly unobtrusively and then get a lot of real-time functionality on your application. And if you start growing beyond that, then likely there's going to be a lot of other bigger problems that you're going to have to face before you even get to needing anything like React. 
So ultimately what I'm saying is stick to the Rails core. By sticking to the Rails core, you're going to have a much more maintainable application in the long run because Stimulus and Rails, Turbo Links, Action Cable are all built under the same umbrella, then they're going to naturally work a lot better together and you're going to get so much interactivity that you really won't need something like React. There are exceptions, of course, and I'm not speaking to those exceptions. I'm speaking to most of the applications out there. So if you're going to be starting a new project, and if you have a lot of experience with React, Angular, or Vue.js, I would say that you should hold off on implementing those into your application and give the vanilla Rails with Stimulus a shot. It's only getting better, and it's only going to get more and more powerful. Well, that's all for this episode. Thank you for watching. For more videos, check out driftandruby.com.